Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mangi. Welcome to my channel. I've gotten a, quite a few requests from viewers asking me to go over all the controls and buttons on the Goldwing. I guess a lot of people don't know what all they do. And I suppose a lot of people riding other bikes like sport bikes or whatever, cruisers, don't have a lot of controls. So something like the Goldwing might be a little daunting for them or confusing. So today I want to go over all the buttons, knobs, and gizmos on the handlebars of this Goldwing DCT Tour. All right, let's start with the left hand bar. Looking here, you have the volume control, this thumb button. This controls the windshield up and down. Here, I'll show you the windshield control. You press up on this, windshield goes up, press down, windshield goes down. I'm not gonna lie, it's one of the best features on the whole bike. <laughs> super handy and super convenient. This button is for phone, like if you wanna talk, push to talk, that kind of stuff, if you have a phone paired to your Goldwing. I don't, so I don't use this button at all. This is the horn button, this little gray button. It's one of my pet peeves with the Goldwing, the horn button is too small, too easy to miss when you go for it. I wish it was a little bit larger and more readily available. Below the horn button is the turn signals. It's a thumb toggle left and right. Both turn signals are on the left bar, unlike Harley where you have the left hand on the left and the right on the right. Goldwing has them both on the one side, the left hand side. Beneath that, this is a paddle shifter for a downshift. Like if you're in with a DCT, the manual version wouldn't have this, but with a DCT in manual mode, you can press this to downshift or even in automatic mode, you can still downshift whenever you want to to be pressing this button. The other button, the pairing button to that is over here on the front side, there's an upshift button right here. So this would be upshift, this would be downshift. So you, these two fingers here can easily go up or down on the fly. It's really convenient actually, it works well. This button on top is the high beam, low beam. Press it forward to go to high, normal is low, pull it back so you can flick the high beams, low beams. Button down here, this is the walking mode button, say they put it in reverse. Press this when the bike's running, it goes into walking mode. You press the downshift button to go reverse, and you press the upshift button to go forward. This is the source button. You change, use this to change like the audio source, like between radio, USB. Just for example, the radio controls. Pressing the source button here will cycle you from radio, from USB stick, to the auxiliary, to FM, to AM, and then back to USB. Volume control here then turns the volume up. In Cannon City, Colorado. The description is short. Or down. Very handy, very nice, works very well. And also if you hold you press and hold this for like a second or so, it mutes the audio. This Nintendo D-pad thing here is the cursor control button. Here, I'll show you. This is to turn the bike on and off. <laughs> it's a rotary switch, but we'll get back, we'll go to that later. Okay, so if I press down the D-pad, you know, the menu goes down. Pressing up takes it up. Left can go left, that kind of thing. If you're in the map mode, pressing up on the keypad with the Nintendo D-pad can, you know, zoom in. Pressing down zooms out. You can press this button in the middle. It acts like an enter button. Pressing it for my navigation will bring up the navigation mode at the bottom and so on. Pressing it in any other mode it's more or less like a confirm button. Like if you press it here, it'll go to the audio source. The button down here is a back button, so pressing this will take you back to the menu. So that works very nicely. This here is the home button. Like if I press it now from here, it goes up to the main menu. All in all, the controls on the left side work very well. On the right side, you have a bit less controls, but no less important. Up here is the start button or the kill button. The big red shiny button. Pressing this down starts it. There are other ways to start it too, but that's one way. Turning it and hitting the kill switch kills it. This area beneath here is the controls like the drivetrain. Pressing down will go into drive. Pressing up goes into neutral. Press the N. This is really only on the DCT version. The gray button here goes from manual to automatic mode. So if you want to like you press it and it would go into toggles between the two of them. 
then you can shift manually over here with the paddle shifters or you put it in automatic mode it's just on its own up here on the back side of the controls on the right side is the mode button this is what you do to toggle between like tour sport mode rain mode and economy mode if i toggle this you can see now it's in tour mode hitting it once goes to sport hitting it another time goes to the economy hitting it again goes to rain and then there's four modes so hitting it one more time cycles back to tour this button down here the triangle is of course the hazard button down here is the cruise control setting now you see this orange light here on the speedometer the orange light means cruise mode is on or the cruise control is active pressing it again turns the cruise mode off that means you can't engage cruise control leaving it on turns orange this button here is what you use to engage and disengage or adjust the cruise control so from if i'm riding and that button is orange if i hit down on this thumb button to go to set it sets the cruise control at the current speed once cruise is set you can go up the plus button to increase speed or down to decrease the speed and then you can you know, hit the brakes or whatever, tap the brake to turn cruise control off. With cruise control off, you can hit up to resume. And then it'll go back to the previous cruise control speed. And of course, this is the front brakes. Although the Goldwing has link brakes. So it controls both the front and the back. If you hit this lever, the front's a little, I think, 70 front, 30 back, something like that. If you hit the, the foot brake, it controls like more back and less front. If you use them both, you know, you get a more equal mix of both, whatever. Of course, this is a DCT, so there's no clutch lever on this bike. All you got is empty air. Ah. Now to the center controls. This knob up top turns the bike off and on. Hitting this turns everything on. Now, you don't have to do to turn the bike on that way. You can't simply hold down the red start button over here from a totally cold mode, and it'll start the bike automatically. There's actually several ways to start the Goldwing. They all work. Hitting it again, well, turning it right again to the on side. See, it says on accessories over here. Hitting it again will go into accessory mode. That means just the radio is on, the GPS and that kind of stuff, but you can't start the bike or anything like that. Hitting it again, goes back into live mode, hot mode, whatever. Turning it to the left, the off side, turns everything down. Now hitting it again, gauges the steering lock. See. can't turn the handlebars now and just switch it over to the right side again to disengage the steering lock it's a very easy it's a very easy steering lock i rather like it although i hardly ever use it with the bike turned on these center controls do a variety of things this well this here is the home like say i was in navigation press this big button here it takes you to the main menu say i wanted to go to the audio source pressing the back button here goes back basically the same thing that these buttons do on the left hand side just bigger format and easier to hit when the bike's rolling a lot of these don't work they go dead they're mainly for use only when the bike is sitting still when the bike's rolling they want you to use the left hand controls unfortunately the big knob in the middle you can turn or move you know up down left right spinning it you can see you can cycle through menu options, but you can also go up and down for the same thing, left and right. You can also press on this big round dial. Pressing it is like an enter button, the same as this little gray button over here. Pressing it is like enter, back, and then down to navigation, hit the center button, so on and so forth. Info brings up a bar on the bottom of the display that gives you like the current song that's playing. Hit it again. It goes like fuel consumption. Like the trip meters and stuff and the fuel consumption for each trip meter fuel economy you're currently getting you can set a timer for elapsed time and then it'll cycle through a bunch of settings these two here on the side both of these two here the select and the set button they're used to control this little cluster of stuff over here select will cycle through like you see the arrow to the left of this you know odometer it needs select cycles down to the range level and up again to the air which is the air temperature and so on hitting the select button you can change what these things are displaying so now we're showing the air temperature but hitting it once 
shows you the miles per hour that the cruise control is set to. And back to the air. If you go down to the bottom, it's the tripometer, and then you got you know trip A, trip B, and total, so on. The range is how much range you have with the fuel you have in the tank. And then it goes to the front tire pressure and the back tire pressure too. And back to the range. The audio button, you can use it to change audio modes like you can over here, source mode more or less. The buttons on the other side of this are the heated halo grip and seat controls. This button here on the left controls the heated grips. If you press it once, you'll see over here on the right side, this thing here pops up, showing you that the heated grips are at maximum. And pressing that button again will drop it down in intensity from five to one to none, back to off again. The one on the right controls the seat heat. Pressing it once brings up, you know, the driver's seat heating controls at full on five, and then pressing it repeated times, you can go from five to four, three, two, one, down to act again to off. Now back off the bike, there's one more control over here for the passenger. This controls the passenger heat for the passenger seat, which you know activates both on the pillion pad and the backrest. So the passenger gets a lot of heat. And it goes from one well, off up to five. It's a dial control. That's my girlfriend's favorite feature on the whole bike. When she rides, she's got that on five all the time. She likes heat on her back. Don't know how she bears it, but she does. Going over here, we have the parking brake. You pull up, and it locks in. Of course, being an automatic motorcycle, you can't leave it in gear when you park it, so my bike has a parking brake. <laughs> pull up on it again to release it. Surprisingly, it works pretty good. One more button on the Honda Gold Wing is this right here. You press this little button here, and it opens this cubby. Once you're in the cubby, you press this button up here, and it opens the gas cap so it locks you know you can't get to the gas cap without opening this without pressing this button which you need a key fob to do so that's how it locks the gas cap from strangers siphoning your gas from you so there you have it all the buttons gizmos and dials on the 2018 honda goldwing dct tour if you have any more questions about the controls or what they do or how they operate let me know in the comments down below and i'll i'll answer Hopefully you found it helpful. Hopefully it answered a lot of your questions from all you people who keep asking. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Keep the wheels down on the tarmac. Ride safe. See you next time.